will come back and this in this video we are going to discuss the specimens in surgery and uh, various examples I'm going to discuss here the image of a specimen and possible related information and questions that can be asked and so let's start with the first part of this specimens in surgery and the layout of this uh, video will be like I'm going to discuss the five important uh, specimens like this uh, in this video we are going to discuss first the small intestine then the mounted specimen of small intestine first and then followed by urinary stones the calcium oxalate how it looks like and then the gallbladder stones the mixed variety the mixed type the most common one we are going to discuss along with related questions that can be asked then lipoma the fourth one the mounted specimen and the fifth, the last one is the cholecystectomy, that is gallbladder mounted specimen. So in this video, we are going to discuss these five important specimens, right? So the first one, the first one is just focus on this specimen. Uh, this is a mounted specimen showing a part of a small intestine the small bowel the cut section is present here you can see the luminal part of this small intestine this one and these are the mucosal folds if you can appreciate various mucosal folds that is present inside the lumen of the small intestine and this is the margin through which the, the small intestine was divided after the excision and it is showing here ischemic enteritis the diagnosis and here if you can focus uh, the arrowhead as a stenosis or structured segment is there and this type of condition can be seen in various uh, GI diseases like Crohn's disease and uh, finally the diagnosis yes possible diagnosis could be to all the causes uh, related to ischemic enteritis enteritis means inflammation of small intestine enteritis and ischemic means yes less of vascular supply right so this specimen is a mounted specimen showing small intestine part diagnosis could be ischemic enteritis and this uh, patient presented to us almost a 50 year old male presented with pain abdomen persistent vomiting passes of altered blood in the stool on examination especially the per abdomen there was diffuse tenderness with guarding and rigidity present uh, one of the relevant investigation this uh, that was barium study the string sign was positive and what is string sign string sign is basically seen in GI conditions where there is presence of small intestinal stenosis or structure is there and a thin string of barium passes through it and on barium study imaging that is known as string sign so in this patient string sign was positive and general blood picture was showing neutrophil leukocytosis 
means large number of neutrophils excessive number of neutrophils right and treatment uh, for this condition is basically RA means resection and astomosis of that affected small intestine segment right again you can just have a look over the small intestine mounted specimen fine now the second one the second specimen you can see on the stone like this and this is basically calcium oxalate stones right calcium oxalate stones these are the most common type of urinary stones and along with obviously calcium phosphate and I am just going through the important points regarding these calcium oxalate stones related questions you can make and these information can be asked during your viva or exam or in your entrance exams right just to save the time I am not repeating the questions so associated these calcium oxalate stones they are associated with consumption of food that is rich in oxalates like spinach or coffee or beer intake all these things are rich in oxalates and they can predispose us for this calcium oxalate type of urinary stones and how to prevent it to prevent these type of stones one should take high amount of or large amount of water should be taken in along with the we must prefer the foods rich in citrate like oranges the lemon and we must take the diet that is rich in calcium and this calcium is going to bind um, the oxalates reducing the incidence of these calcium oxalate stones and yes a very important thing no extra supplement of vitamin C should be taken no extra supplement means excessive amount of vitamin C consumption also predisposes for these types of urinary stone the calcium oxalate stones and the appearance once again this one right the calcium oxalate stones now the third specimen third specimen is the gallbladder stones it's a mixed type variety the gallbladder stones you can see here this one multiple gallbladder stones you can see the mixed variety the, basically the gall stones there are three types there are three types the cholesterol stones the pigment stones and a mixed type of stones Again, the mixed type of stones is having a larger amount of cholesterol, the predominant component. And this cholesterol stone is basically pure type of cholesterol stones. There's a pigment stones commonly seen in hemolytic anemia. And out of these three, this mixed type called stone is the commonest one. The various factors responsible for this gallstone formation could be like metabolic where there is altered concentration of bile salts lecithin that is phospholipids and cholesterol one of the factor predisposing for gallstones could be a cholestasis cholestasis within the biliary tree any infection in the biliary tree right and whenever there is alteration in the gallbladder epithelium these are the predisposing factor for gallstone formation Three important points regarding various types of gallstones and these questions can be asked from you during the your viva if this specimen you are going to get. So regarding cholesterol stone, this is basically formed in gallbladder, usually single but may attain larger sizes, sometimes multiple also, but usually single, remember this cholesterol stone and it is radiolucent. Right. The second type is pigment stone. Pigment stone. 
with maybe black or brown black pigment stone is basically formed in the gallbladder whereas brown pigment stone that is usually formed in the bile duct and this brown pigment is associated with biliary infection right these black pigment pigment stones form that is formed in the gallbladder they are usually multiple a small dark green to black in color right black in color just ignore this word right so black in color okay so these are the three varieties of gallstones type and out of these the mixed type variety is the most common one and here you can see the mixed type of gallstone these are the commonest and it mainly contains cholesterol these are the mixed type variety okay so we can say that gallbladder stones the cholesterol mixed type is the most common type of stone Combining the pure variety and the mixed variety, it amounts to almost 80% of the cases. Whereas the pigment stones, the black and brown, both, they are responsible for around 20% cases and usually seen in hemolytic anemias. Okay. Now the fourth specimen, the fourth specimen is somewhat like this. You can see these yellowish grayish tissues these are lipomas okay so a, just a scenario a 20 year male complaining of a swelling you can be asked how the patient of lipoma can present to you so a 20 year male just an example complaining of swelling over the back area for four years and on examination, swelling of size is roughly 2 by 3 cm, situated in the back of neck, mobile, soft in consistency with lobular edge, and slip sign was positive, overlying skin was not adherent, and it was mobile over the underlying muscle. So the diagnosis is lipoma. So remember this slip sign. This is positive in cases of lipoma, right? Cases. And what is the treatment? Treatment is excision of lipoma. Okay? This one. Lipoma. Lipoma can occur anywhere wherever there is presence of adipose tissue. Usually, these lipomas, they, they are not seen intracranially inside the cranium okay so this is the final one the fifth specimen for this video uh, this is a mounted cholecystectomy specimen that is mounted specimen of gallbladder and here you can see the walls are very thin right very thin walled gallbladder and obviously the patient of this uh, this type of patient where we are going to do this cholecystectomy usually presents with the hypochondrium or epigastric pain right hypochondrium normally and there could be tenderness presenting with vomiting, nausea, pain right and on ultrasound there will be presence of acoustic shadows inside the gallbladder and the treatment is obviously the cholecystectomy. Few important points regarding this gallbladder mounted specimen. Just remember if the wall is thin walled, there may be um, other specimens of this gallbladder. So just focus on the wall thickness of the wall. Thin walled gallbladder specimen is there. It is usually suggestive of mucosal. And if that is thick walled, 
it is suggestive of empyema gallbladder right and few points regarding this concept of open cholecystectomy laparoscopic cholecystectomy laparoscopic subtotal cholecystectomy type 1 type 2 then type 3 cholecystectomy means removal of gallbladder open cholecystectomy means removal of gallbladder through open approach laparoscopic cholecystectomy means removal of gallbladder through minimal access surgery through laparoscopy laparoscopic subtotal cholecystectomy means all of the gallbladder is not being removed due to various causes like empyema like unclear anatomy of calot triangle and depending on the part of gallbladder that is we are removing we can classify them into type 1 type 2 and type 3 usually right type 2 is most commonly performed whenever required wherever there is unclear anatomy of calots right whenever the gallbladder is adhered densely adhered with the bed and in that case if we are going to leave the posterior wall of the gallbladder along uh, with the liver we are leaving that and rest of the gallbladder we are removing that is known as type 1 laparoscopic subtotal cholecystectomy whenever we are leaving a part of gallbladder near the calot triangle that is type 2 and a combination of these two whenever we are leaving tissue near the calot strangle along with the posterior wall of gallbladder that is known as type 3 so next question could be what is calot strangle what are the boundaries of calot strangle definitely ask question if you are going to have this specimen of gallbladder any gallbladder specimen so calot strangle boundaries you just a quick revision basically this is somewhat like this this is the superior border this 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 superior margin of this boundary is formed by the inferior margin of liver this is the left border or the medial border that is formed by the common hepatic duct common hepatic duct right and this is the lateral boundary and this is formed by the cystic duct right interestingly this this is also known as hepato uh, cystic triangle or cystohepatic triangle but at that time in 1891 uh, Kellogg's in his thesis what he described at that time in 1891 this superior this boundary was formed by the cystic artery right the cystic artery in 1891 nowadays we are taking the cystic artery as content content of this calot strangle this is a very interesting fact regarding this calot strangle so just to summarize calot strangle boundaries Today, we are taking it as the superior one is like inferior margin of the liver. Then the medial is by common hepatic duct and this lateral by cystic duct. And the content is cystic artery and lymph nodes, right? So that is all in this video. See you in the next part of this surgical specimen till then thank you bye bye